Hello everybody, how are you? Hello everybody, how are you? It is time to start our day, it is time to work and play. Hello everybody, how are you? Hi guys, are you ready to continue talking about community helpers today? Yesterday we talked about what a community helper is and how you guys can be one in your homes, in your neighborhoods, in your towns. Today we're gonna to talk about one community helper in particular and that is a farmer. A farmer is one of the most important community helpers that we have. And we're gonna talk about why in just a minute. But first, I wanna start with a book. Yesterday we read a book about different hats that community helpers wear. Today we're gonna to read one that's called, Whose Vehicle Is This? Do you know what a vehicle is? A vehicle is something that you drive. It could be a car, or a truck, something like that. Whose vehicle is this? Let's see if we can figure out whose job has them driving these different vehicles. Whoa, the first one is a double page again, like yesterday with that fire helmet. Look at this, it's a big, long yellow one. Whose vehicle is this carrying lots of children? What do you think? It is a school bus driver's vehicle. The bus stops to pick up or drop off children. A bus driver must be very careful to make sure the passengers get on and off the bus safely. They have a very important job keeping everybody safe. Ready for the next one? Whose vehicle is this? Chugging down a track. Hmm. What drives on a track? That would be an engineer's locomotive. An engineer drives a locomotive. The locomotive pushes or pulls the train down the tracks. A train has a driver, the engineer. Whose vehicle is this? Rushing towards flames and smoke. We got that one. I think we know. I think we know. It is a firefighter's engine. A firefighter needs to reach a fire quickly so no one will get hurt. Fire engines have flashing lights and loud sirens. Those lights help everyone see the fire engine quickly and move out of the way. Very important to do that. Whose vehicle is this flying fast through the clouds and sky? I think we got it. I think we know this one. It is... A pilot's airplane. Airplanes travel very fast. A pilot must know his airplane well. He has to push many buttons, turn dials, and use the computer system when flying the plane. Whose vehicle is this? Making circles in wavy water. What do you guys think? Let's see. It's a fisherman's boat. A fisherman catches fish and sells them to markets. The, those markets sell them to you. Fishermen need boats that are sturdy and strong. Their boats carry long nets and buckets for fish. Hmm, I should have known by the net. Whose vehicle is this making lots of stops and drops? Look at that vehicle back here. I bet you recognize that. I bet you see that out in front of your house. This is a mail carrier's truck. A mail carrier arrives at the post office early in the morning. Her truck is loaded and ready to go. She drives her truck from street to street. She delivers the mail to every home. Whose vehicle is this blasting between the stars? This is an astronaut spaceship. An astronaut explores space. Before she goes, she exercises and takes classes to prepare her for flying. A spaceship is built with special parts so it can fly into space and return to Earth safely. Whose vehicle is this riding down the road? I'll bet you know this one. It's got the big tire up in front. I see a gym shoe back there. This is your vehicle. It's your bicycle. People have been riding bicycles since the 1800s. In many countries, there are more bicycles than cars. How cool is that? How often do you ride your bike? Have you been able to get out a lot in warm weather and ride your bike in the last several months? It's a fun way to move around quickly, see different things, and get some exercise. So those were some vehicles that different jobs use. But one that we didn't talk about that was, was not in the book that we're going to talk about later is a combine harvester, and that's a vehicle that farmers use. And like I said, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. First, let's take a look at some of the things that we get from farms. Let me pull over my thumbs up, thumbs down here. Come back to that too in just a second here. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All right, I'm gonna show you some pictures and you give me a thumbs up if this is either grown on a farm or it's made from something grown on a farm or if it's not, 
then give me a thumbs down. All right, let's see. My first picture is corn. Is corn grown on the farm? Oh my goodness, yes. You see a lot of very tall corn stalks this time of year that are starting to come down. How about potatoes? Vegetables are grown on farms. They can be grown in our gardens. They're grown on farms. Potatoes are. Here's an interesting one. What about bread? Have you ever seen bread growing out of the ground on a farm? Probably not, but you've probably seen wheat growing in wheat farms, and wheat is where we get bread from. So bread is a thumbs up. Bread actually does come from farms because its main ingredient, wheat, comes from the farm. How about this one? A glass of milk. Does milk come from a farm? Do you see milk growing on trees or growing out of the ground? No, but who lives on the farm that we get our milk from? Cows, so this is another thumbs up so far. Wow, I'm running out of space for a thumbs up. How many thumbs up do we have so far? One, two, three, four. How many thumbs down? Zero, none. Okay, let's see, I've got two more. Let's see, I love this one. Candy. Have you ever seen bags of candy growing on, on stalks in the, on the fields? No, but one of the major ingredients in candy is of course sugar. And sugar grows on farms cane, sugar beets. So we wouldn't have candy without sugar, and that comes from farms. So even candy is, is related to farms. That was a thumbs up. One more. This is kind of a funny one. Kind of matches me today, doesn't it? Do clothes grow on farms? Do you go to a farm field and pick out what you're going to wear, what you're going to buy? No, clothes don't grow on farms, but cotton does and cotton is what makes most of our clothes. My shirt is made from cotton. So I'm going to give this one another thumbs up. Look at this. How many thumbs down did we end up having? None. Zero. How many thumbs up? We had one, two, three, four, five, six thumbs up. We had everything from vegetables to clothes and candy. That is pretty cool. Without farmers farming, we wouldn't be able to have all of these things that you see here. All of these things are either grown there or come from something that's grown there. That is pretty special. Thank you farmers for all of your hard work to make sure that we have all of the things that we need and enjoy. Speaking of farmers working hard, right now at this time of year, in the fall or the autumn, it's harvest time. Farmers are working so hard to bring in the crops and gather all the things that they've grown. And like I said earlier, one of the main vehicles that they use for that is a combine harvester. I am going to put a video linked on Facebook and your grown-up can help you find it. And it's a short little video that shows you how a combine harvester works. This one in particular is working in a wheat field. And what I like about this video is they not only show you how the combine harvester gathers the wheat, it shows you what happens after that, what they do with the wheat and how it becomes things like bread and cake. So follow that link and check that out. It's an interesting video. This is a picture of a combine harvester. Look at that, it is so big, it is so huge. I actually got to sit on one one time and it was a hard climb up there and I felt almost like I was in an airplane. I was sitting up so high and it was so large. They're really cool. So when you're driving and you're going past fields, check out these big farm vehicles that they use to gather the wheat and the corn and the soy and all their crops. It's pretty cool to, to watch them work for a little while. So those are some of the different things that are grown on the farm. I would like to make one of them with you right now. I'm not gonna plant seeds and wait for them to grow. That would take kind of a long time. I'm gonna paint. We're gonna paint together if you'd like. You can get your supplies or you can paint later. But what I have, I have a toilet paper tube and I put a clip on it. That way I don't have to touch it and get my hands all covered in paint while we're talking and working together. I'm gonna to make a corn stalk, kind of like this. I'm gonna, well, let's see, let's take a look at this. It's yellow and it's got a little bit of white and it's got some green, the husk on the outside. So let me start with this and I've got some yellow paint. I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in it and I'm simply going to paint my toilet paper tube. Let's see. Like I said, I'm holding it with a clip. That way my hands are staying clean. And when I'm done, if I want to come back, I can move the clip to a different space and I could cover that area. But I think that's good for right now for what we're going to do. One more little paint here. Now, when my paint is still wet, I also have some 
popcorn kernels. These happen to be popcorn kernels because that's what I have in my house. And I'm going to see if they're going to stick to my paint. If they don't, then I'm going to come back later and put some glue on. But let me turn it like this and put some corn kernels on it. It's starting to look like a corn cob, isn't it? Look at that. I can put as many or as few as I would like on there. I'm going to stop with those. And you could keep going. You could cover your whole thing with corn if you have it. Now, one more thing I needed was the green husk. So I went, let me set this down to start drying. I went to my um, scissors folder and I got out some green paper. You can see I've used it already. It had something else cut out of it. I'm gonna cut some, they're gonna kind of look like leaves that I'm gonna put around my corn cob, but I want two of them. So what I'm gonna do is fold my paper in half like this. I'll watch what happens. I'm just gonna kind of guess what I think a leaf shape would look like. I think it starts close at the bottom gets wide, comes back narrow at the top. Now I'm gonna flip around and I'm gonna come back down to the bottom again. It's gonna kind of, kind of do the same thing. And it's gonna come back around to the bottom. Now, because I folded my paper in half, look at this. I only had to cut one time, but I have two pieces. So I made it a little easier for myself. So I'm gonna get my corn back and I'm gonna stick this one on here. And I'm gonna stick this one on here and I've got my corn husk. You can do that too. You don't have to paint. You can use a marker, you can use a crayon, you can use whatever supplies you have at home, but we can make corn. We don't have to grow it, but we can make it. And then you can have that as a fall decoration because like I said, it is harvest time. So it's a good fall decoration. Let me put this down and let it start drying. All right, I'm gonna put that to the side. Okay, so we've talked about things that are on the farm that grow on the farm. What else is on a farm? What else do you find on a farm besides crops that grow? You find animals, right? I saw you had a little sneak peek at my poster a minute ago. Let me bring it back here. Here are some of the many animals you can find on the farm. I know a little song I'd like to sing with you guys, but I'm gonna need some help. When I point to an animal, I want you to say its name with me. And then when I go like this, I want you to make the sound that it makes. You ready? You might know the song, so if you do, sing along through the whole thing. You ready? We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a black and white cow. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a black and white cow. The cow, he makes a sound like this, moo, moo. The cow, he makes a sound like this, moo, moo. We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a little white sheep. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a little white sheep. The sheep, he makes a sound like this, ba, ba. The sheep, he makes us sound like this, ba ba. One more, guys, ready? We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a big pink pig. Down on Grandpa's farm, farm there is a big pink pig. The pig, he makes us sound like this, oink, oink. The pig, he makes a sound like this, oink, oink. We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. Nice job, you guys, clap for yourselves, good job. Some of the other animals on here we didn't point to, but you might know them, the rooster. There's ducks, you used to find ducks a lot, chicks. And who else didn't we look at? The dog, there's a lot of dogs and cats on farms. And of course, a horse, of course a horse. We made a rhyme. All right, guys, those were our animal sounds, but they don't necessarily sound like that. Would you like to listen to some real animal farm sounds? Let me get my animal farm sounds here and we'll listen to some real ones. See if you can tell what this sound is. You ready? Here comes the first one. Did you get that one? That one was... That one was a cow, and now we started the second one already. What's this one? That one is one of the ducks that we heard about. Let's see who we have next. Here comes the next one. That is a pig. 
Now we have kitty cat. Here's the next one. One more. Those are some of the sounds you would hear on a farm. So next time you're out and about and you're driving in your car and you're watching those big tractors, take a moment and check them out. See how they're doing their job and what they're doing. It's really fun to watch. It's a kind of a cool thing. And you can make, um, you can go make a corn stock if you want to. What else can you think of to make today? Maybe you could use something to make a barn and fill it with animals. Maybe you can make some other crops. Maybe you can make a whole field of crops and gather them like the farmers are doing right now. Don't forget to say thank you to a farmer. If you see one, they do a very important job. And tomorrow we will come back and we will talk about firefighters. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time. Bye.